Now this is a video that I'll be doing, fading in and fading out a few things here and there, on the broadleaf plantain. Now some of you may be saying, hang on, this is supposed to be plantain, whereas actually no, the proper pronunciation of this plant is plantain. At the moment, I'm focusing on the broadleaf plantain, and I'm on my neighbor's driveway because he has the broadleaf variety and I have the Rugel's variety or the black seeded plantain. Interestingly, these two grew two continents apart from one another. But this one in particular, which is your broadleaf, has a huge, very exhaustive history. In fact, studies of peat bog pollen grains reveal that this plant was growing in England long before recorded history. Now I'm going to focus in here as best as I can on the seed and the flowers. This is going to be very difficult and I might just forego on that because I will be putting an image at the end of this video showing you the comparison between the seeds of the broadleaf variety and the rugels. Now let's go to his backyard. As you can tell this is quite a resilient plant because this is a lawn that gets mowed regularly and even though the leaves are being cut the seeds are very persistent in coming back. Now, this plant has made themselves quite at home in many countries. In fact, the broadleaf plantain has its roots in about 70 different countries. That's quite impressive. And of course, this is one of the plants in which weary gardeners dig from their lawns on a regular basis. And they wonder why it keeps coming back. Oh, I had to jump there. There's a squirrel in the downspout. <laughs> But these were brought over to North America because they were such a valuable source of food and medicine. Now, interestingly, unbeknownst to the European settlers, after they brought this plant to North America, they realized that there was pretty much a, a look-alike that grows here. And it's a different species, the Rugel's plantain. And I will have to go to my backyard to show you that. And what's really phenomenal is that the rugels and the broadleaf share almost the identical nutrient content and medicinal benefits. Absolutely astonishing to think that two plants living on two different continents can do that. Now let me just focus right in here and you'll see there are no purple markings on the stems of this plant. Not at all. Totally green. So when you see this, you know for sure that is the broadleaf variety. There we go. As you can tell, these ones tend to be growing low to the ground, but that's only because it's uh, mowed on a regular basis. But sometimes these plants can get quite large, as you saw right at the beginning. The flowers are rather inconspicuous. And the leaves have parallel veins, and they're very tough, making it very difficult to eat, unless the plant is very small. So I'm going to end this part right here. And let's go to my backyard. So here we have the Rugel's plantain. And of course this looks very healthy because this is an area that is off limits to any kind of cultivation, <laughs> mowing the lawn. This is definitely my little uh, area that I like to harvest from. So as you can see, the leaves of the Rugel's plantain are almost dead identical 
to the broadleaf variety. But here's one of the differences right there, the purple markings. And the seeds. I'm going to try to get into the seeds there, but again, it's difficult, and I'm going to add an image at the end of this video so you can see the comparison of the seed heads between the broadleaf plantain and the Rugel's plantain. There are many different varieties of plantago, plantago major being broadleaf and plantago rugli being the Rugel's variety or black seeded plantain. They go, this plant goes by two different names. There's also the narrow leaf plantain or plantain, plantago lanceolata. And if you're near the coast, there's plantago maritima. And if you're near any ditches or bodies of water, there's also the water plantain, which is Alisma plantago aquatica. All those are on my website and links to those are below. Regardless of whether it's this plantain or the broadleaf, you're going to find a lot of calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, oh, and I think zinc as well, actually. Lots of B vitamins. The mineral list is astronomical as well as the other nutrients and phyto constituents that are absolutely phenomenal. So there we go. The two main different types of plantain. And as a little uh, side note, as you see growing in with it is knotgrass. Now knotgrass, interestingly enough, when you take equal amounts of it with the plantain as a nice strong infused tea can help with different issues including diarrhea. Plantain. Edible. Medicinal. You can, there's all sorts of recipes. If you go to the link below, it'll take you to my store page. There are 30 pages in a PDF magazine that I have published. And there's lots of other information in that magazine as well. Medicinally, this will stop bleeding, stinging. But again, tons more information about this plant in my PDF publication that I sell for $5. And the link to it is below. So I thank you for watching. And instead of ripping this out of your garden, start eating it. Thank you.